Well, welcome to Armagh City's home park where it's north versus south in the Champions Cup here today. Glen Torren representing the NIBFA take on Cherry Orchard. This first game, it's an under 13 match. Let's see who comes out on top. Glen Torren's under 13s were intent on setting the standard for the NIBFA sides against their southern counterparts at Armagh on Champions Cup Day. Some hesitancy in the Glen Turin backline gifted Orchard's Jack O'Reilly with an early opportunity. His shot though was straight at Dylan Graham. Matthew Carson's ball over the top brought Charlie Lindsay and Aaron Whiteman into play. Whiteman's cross found Elliot Wood, who was the header just wide of the Orchard goal. Glen Torren's opener arrived after 18 minutes. Whiteman's corner fell to Wood. Matthew Carson fed Whiteman again for a second time. And Callum Marshall produced the most audacious overhead kick to make it 1-0 to Glen Torren. It took a further 10 minutes for the game's second goal. Charlie Lindsay showed tenacity in midfield. Whiteman then found Elliot Wood, who in turn picked out the top corner, much to the delight of his travelling family. In the second half, Glen Turin looked to increase their lead. Jake Donaghy's shot was easily gathered by Cian Clements in the Cherry Archer goal, though. And Orchard got one back. Minutes after the restart, Clements finding Craig King, who passed to O'Reilly. And O'Reilly slid the ball past Dylan Graham. The Glen soon restored their two-goal buffer. Lindsay's ball should have been collected by the Orchard keeper, but Clemens dropped it, allowing Jake Wallace the easiest of chances. He made full advantage of it to make the score 3-1 Glentoran. Charlie Lindsay continued to orchestrate in midfield and he brought a decent save from Clements with just over 10 minutes of a game remaining. And the Belfast side did wrap up proceedings minutes later. Elliot Wood fed Callum Marshall who made sure Glen Torren lifted the Champions Cup. Full time from Armagh, it finished Glen Torren 4, Cherry Orchard 1. No, we're very disappointed, but we have to give our congratulations to our Glen Torrent team. They were excellent today. Uh, they gave us a lesson in football, but we are disappointed. But football is about hard work and, and effort, and we just had to learn for that and just put our heads down and w work a bit harder. I thought 3 or 4 1, to be honest, was a fair re reflection of the, of the game. Uh, we were a bit disappointed. We came out in the second half. Uh, we got a goal back. We, we got a goal back. Um, we thought we'd push on from there, but fair play to Glen Torrent. They were a much better team on the day. Football is a simple game. It's all about hard work, effort, bit of bit of character. But you, sometimes you learn a lot in, in the field as well. Um, we've had these boys for five years, and there's, there's, we have a lot of good players. But but today we didn't perform, and we're and we're very disappointed in that. I thought the boys worked really hard and from the first minute to the last minute they never gave Cherry Orchard any piece in the ball and I'd say that the work rate was phenomenal. So it was fun. really, really pleased with the boys. Very proud of them indeed. As I say, just the, just the way we, we worked hard and we fought for every ball and our pass. We had good, some good passes of play and 
as you said, we're going to crack and go from overhead kick. You know, that, that plays you the things you work on in training when it works in the match. You're really pleased about it. Hello and welcome to Armagh City's home park, the second game of the day in the Champions Cup season. and Gannon United Youth take on Belvedere. Both teams are out to lift the trophy today. Let's see, will it be the team from the north or the team from the south? Dungannon in yellow took on Belvedere in the under-14 final, hoping to add more silverware to their trophy cabinet. After nine minutes, James Harrell teed up Ross Fay for Belvedere, but his effort was cleared to safety by the Dungannon defence. Down at the other end, Josh Keeley was showing his quality in goal, taking this Aaron Donnelly free kick with great ease. Dungannon United were to take the lead just moments later. Connor Foles won possession. He fed Porig Lynch. Sean McAllister's finish was out of the top drawer. Belvedere were level just two minutes later, Ben McCormick finding himself in the perfect position to slot past Oshin Gibson to make it one apiece. Dungannon regained the lead on 17 minutes. Aaron Donnelly's free kick was only partially cleared. And Porig Lynch was on hand to tuck the ball home. Before half-time, Frankie Nwakolo showed good touch and pace before firing a shot straight at Gibson in the Dungannon goal. Lynch then won a free kick on the edge of the Belvedere box. Step up Aaron Donnelly, whose free kick was brilliantly pushed onto the post by Josh Keeley. Just six minutes into the second half, Frankie Nicuolo raced clear of Dungannon's defence. He drew the keeper before making it 2-2. Well, that goal signalled a response from Dungannon. Aaron Donnelly's free kick deflected in off Ross Fay to make it 3-2. Then right on the full-time whistle, a mistake in the Belvedere defence allowed Matthew Lennon to pick up possession before slotting home full-time from Armagh. Dungannon United Youth 4, Belvedere 2. I think it's a learning curve for our lads, you know, obviously travelling. Last year we travelled a lot in the All Ireland and it brought us to this final, but in fairness to where the lads today, the travelling sometimes, you know, nerves can settle in and things like that. And I thought some parts of the game was a bit nervous too, you know. No, I wouldn't make that an excuse. In fairness to Dungannon, they deserve to win. In fairness, we had opportunities in the game where we, the keeper made a couple of saves, but I wouldn't take it away. We haven't played in a few weeks, but it's not an excuse. It's 11 v 11 on the day, you know. In fairness to me, you know, I'm an honest sort of guy. I told them, you know, a couple of home truths, basically. They're a fabulous bunch of kids. Since I've come in, this is our fourth final in three years. They're a great bunch of kids. But I do tell them, you know, how I feel, you know, after the game. And in fairness, there's great development in these kids, and that's the most important thing. Winning cups is fantastic. I like, like winning and development at the same time, but sometimes you can't win everything, you know. Delighted, obviously very, very proud because um, 
you know, we're, we're playing against a, a very, very good, good side in Belvedere. Physically very strong. Try to play the right way. I thought the first 15 minutes, um, our boys didn't really start. Maybe the occasion or whatever. Um, you know, we tried to play, play it from the back, and, and when we would, when we did that, there we looked nervous and we gave the ball away. We, but we, we, st we hung in there, uh, and once we settled down, we scored two good goals in the first half. But it took us those 15, 20 minutes to get started. Um, but as I say, once we settled down and started playing football, I thought we caused them lots of problems. Um, the proof of that was the two good goals we scored in the first half, plus we hit the post, uh, and that was in a, a probably 10 or 15 minute spell. So I think once the boys settled down uh, and started to play the football that we can do, um, we deservedly got the goals because we looked dangerous every time we went forward. Well, next up here at Armagh City's home park, it's Linfield versus St Joseph's Boys in the under-15 showpiece. Let's see from these two who will lift the Champions Cup. Well, after losing to St Joseph's in the previous two Champions Cup finals, Linfield had a score to settle with their southern rivals at home park in Armagh. The Blues settled quickest and took a fourth minute lead when Ewan Kelly's corner was headed home by Jack Scott. Well, Linfield were clearly out to put on a show for their travelling support. And that was evident in their play in the early stages. Ben Wiley played a pass to Mark Green who won a second corner in quick succession for the Belfast side. Step up Ewan Kelly again, this time providing the assist for Jesse Carson to make it 2-0 with just 8 minutes on the clock. Jack Scott was the standout player in midfield, but Scott couldn't manage to test Derek Dunn on this occasion. Well, Linfield went on to increase their lead before the break. Mark Green and Carl Johnson played key roles in the build-up. Lee Ray's half volley allowed the keeper little chance. Linfield continued to dominate after the restart with St. Joe's having no real answer. Derek Dunn made this fine save from Sam Morrow. St Joseph's centre half, Lee Kavanagh watched in despair as his looping header from Jimmy Doyle's corner came back off the bar. And that was the best chance for St Joe's on the afternoon. Linfield's fourth goal was started and finished by Darren Highland, a sweet left foot strike into the top corner and it took the match further away from St Joseph's. And then with uh, just three minutes remaining, Linfield completed a fine day in Armagh. Ben buchanan Rolleston crossing for Michael McDade to make it St. Joseph's Boys nil, Linfield five. Absolutely over the moon. Uh, this is our third attempt at this trophy, we've lost two and thankfully today it was third time lucky 5-0. I mean, from the boys walked into the shades room this morning, you just sensed there was a want in them, a desire and a, a total commitment to Linfield and they showed that today from start to finish. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. 5-0, their goalkeeper made some fantastic saves and as I say, all credit to Joseph, a fantastic club from Dublin. Um, great friendship we've had with them for many years but it's one of the best Christmas presents I've had now to be fair. I guess the goals that we scored and um, the fact that, I mean, we brought 16 to and every one of them um, played their part. Um, but the football that they played today I thought was frightening, particularly the first, the first 30 minutes. Uh, moved the ball well, scored some great goals. And, I mean, that's the first goals we've actually scored from set pieces this season. The two headers particularly really, really pleased me because it's, it's, the, thing, it's the things we work on the training pitch. So they paid off today. And I'd also like to thank who, the men behind the scenes, uh, Mr. Rodney Heasley. Peter Houston and Andy Kerr, who's a legend at Linfield Football Club. I'm just, I'm just absolutely made up.
Hello and welcome to Armagh City's home park where Cliftonville take on St Kevin's boys in the Under-16 Champions Cup final. St Kevin's boys have brought through lots of players over the years including Ian Hart, Jeff Hendrick and Liam Brady. Let's see today from the current crop who will come out on top today. St Kevin's playing in orange got us underway in Armagh and from that very first whistle they set out to pressurise Cliftonville. The game's first meaningful chance arrived after just seven minutes. Dawson Devoy fed Donovan Troy who brought this fine save from Dylan Stewart in the Cliftonville goal. St Kevin's had the ball in the Cliftonville net moments later but Ryan Cassidy's header was ruled out by the referee for an earlier foul on Stewart. As the match progressed, it continued to be dominated by St Kevin's. The opening goal duly arrived on 10 minutes. Brandon Birmingham playing in Cassidy, who showed great composure in rounding Stewart to make it 1-0. And just six minutes later, it was two. Ryan Tierney's half volley came back off the Cliftonville post and Ryan Cassidy reacted quickest to double his tally and his team's tally. Just after the restart, Cliftonville fashioned their first decent effort on goal. Leo Bryan crossing for Conor McGonagall, who shot straight at Cian Clark. St Kevin's third brought up a hat-trick for Cassidy. Neat build-up play from Kat Mashigo and Tierney allowed Dawson Devoy to provide Cassidy with the easiest of tap-ins. <laughs> then a couple of minutes before the end, Devoy showed plenty of fight, but he couldn't find a way past Stewart in the Cliftonville goal. Full time from Armas and Kevin's boys 3, Cliftonville 0. Uh, I think uh, firstly congratulations to St Kevin's. Uh, very well organised team, very well drilled, look very hungry. Um, no complaints about the, the end results. Uh, I think in the first half we made a couple of mistakes that could have really you know, helped our cause a bit more but no complaints about the result. I think when it comes to big occasions like this, obviously it's cup final, it's a one-off occasion. Uh, I think just to go and enjoy the case a bit more, relax coming to these bigger games and go and show themselves, you know, express themselves a little bit more. We've seen a lot of things there, you know, demonstrate today that we coach throughout the week, so we're very happy with things like that. But just a bit more experience, you know, wh which these games obviously bring, they allow the players to progress in their, in their careers. Yeah, absolutely, you know, obviously keep their heads up, you know, take away what they've learned from today, you know you know, sort of cut the, the mistakes at the back and hold the ball a bit more, relax the ball a bit more, but learn from the experience and the next time they, they come against, you know, showcase an event like this, they're a bit more prepared and they can fall back on the experience that they have from today. Yeah, very good. It was a great workout for us. We've just finished our season and we're waiting for summer football to kick in in March for us, so it was something to look forward to over the Christmas period. And and it was great, very well organised tournament, so we were delighted to be part of it. He's been excellent for us all year, to be fair. You see him, the two strikers off the team have just signed for Watford as well, so they'd be going over pretty soon. So they're just the, the top lads, but great players also. Very, very good. Like all, all Northern Ireland teams are very well organised, you know, you know, technically excellent as well. So we knew that it was, it was going to be a tough workout, and we knew that we, we had to be at our best to win the game. Nothing short of it. Well, they're very serious about the football, so that's a big plus. So it's not that difficult, you know, and they want to obviously go on to a bigger and better stage and play at a higher standard. So so the lads are motivated themselves. So we train three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and to be fair, they're hardly missing, you know, so which is decent enough. 